call this meeting to order. We have the prayer and the pledge by Council Member Destin Sweet. Turn up in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Roll call. Mayor Pro Tem Dan Doyle. Here. Council Member Natalie Lopez. Present. Council Member Marlon Lewis. Here. Council Member David Broussard. Here. Council Member Deidre Ledbetter. Here. Council Member Sherry Guidry. Present. Council Member Dustin Sawyer. Here. Thank you. Our first agenda item one public comment. Do we have any public comment cards? Yes. No, sir. Thank you. Seeing that we have none, we'll move on to agenda item number two, acceptance of the minutes. Acceptance of the minutes of the August 1st, 2017 meeting as published. Motion, Motion by Councilmember Broussard, second by? Second. Councilmember Lewis. Any discussion? I, got, um, we don't have, I didn't have my, um, the minutes of the meeting um, for the last meeting in my packet. Does oh, everybody okay. else have theirs? Okay. Uh oh. I was just I can asking. Email it to you. Okay. Do you want yeah. me to go get you one right now? No, ma'am. You sure? So, none of you have? <laughs> I didn't have mine. You didn't have yeah. All right. Well, then let's just line. strike that item because I can't make you vote to accept something right. you didn't review. Right. So, why don't we strike it and next meeting we'll accept two of them. Right. We'll accept two. So, do I have a motion to remove it till next meeting? Motion to remove it for motion next meeting. Motion by Council Member Sherry Guidry and a second by Council Member Broussard. Uh, Please vote your machines. Thank you. Sorry for that error. We'll do two of them at the next meeting. Agenda item three, persons to address the council. Mary Hemail with uh, Solomon House presentation on fundraisers and support. Hello. Hi. 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 Welcome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you for all for having me here. Uh, I am Mary Email, and I sit on the board at Solomon House. Uh, which is our local food pantry located on at 520 Center Street and we asked uh, my fellow board members asked that I come and address the council because we realize that maybe there's a lot of people in New Iberia that don't even realize that we're there uh, ironically being in the center of the city so uh, I'd like to just tell y'all a little bit about us and about our fundraiser this year and so what we are is a primarily a food pantry we uh, distribute approximately 100 units of groceries every week and in those units will be between three to ten bags of groceries depending on the size of the family um, we also provide financial assistance for people with housing utility and medical needs and uh, we also we're right across the school from school days apartments many of our clients are the elderly and we deliver their groceries to them um, and so having said that we also participate in several other programs yearly uh, this is our third year during the summer we did a little leader leaders program in a partnership with North Street Elementary we had 21 children who are uh, basically being cultivated and uh, char learning the charm school methods of leadership and uh, they were provided school uniforms for the year by Solomon House we also partnered with uh, ESA, Episcopal School of Acadiana, to host a Christmas party last year at school days where everyone received gifts. And there was a nice party with food and entertainment. And so we, uh, we're active in the community. And so because of that, we, uh, we have to have a fundraiser every year. And so our fundraiser this year is our can of nothing. Uh, you can get it for only $2.99 at Seminole South. And so uh, it's been going on, it's been ongoing since early summer and it's going well, but we have only Seminole South that is ca carrying our cans with, complete with barcode. And uh, so, uh, and of course, uh, A&E Gallery, the art gallery on St. Peter Street is come on board to sell our cans. And so we would like to appeal to the larger Iberia community, anybody 
listening or watching in future uh, the t telecasts who might be interested in uh, offering our can of nothing at their business establishment, uh, we would welcome them. And they can contact uh, me, Mary email, at solomonhousefundraiser at gmail.com. Or they can call Solomon House at 364-7798 and leave me a message. Um, we also would like to invite people to come and volunteer at Solomon House. We have volunteer hours from Monday and Wednesday from 8.30 to 12. On Tuesdays from 6.30 to 12, and that is the day that we uh, hand out our groceries. And then on Fridays from 8.30 to 11. In the state of Louisiana, one in four children live in a um, food insecure home. And so uh, it's a very real thing for many, many people, many of our citizens. And also in the state of Louisiana, we rank second, second in the nation um, in, in senior hunger. One in four seniors live daily facing hungry, hunger. And those are many of who our clients are. And so we have this idea sometimes about people that, uh, who, who receive charity. And again, if you look in the uh, New Testament in Paul's letters, he uh, often speaks of love and charity. And he uses the word agape because they mean the same thing. They're interchanged in those letters of his. So charity is, is something that we should practice daily. And so I invite everybody in New Iberia to check out Solomon House. We have a Facebook page uh, that you can follow us at it's Solomon House. And again, if any of you out there in the larger community would be interested in either sponsoring our, uh, our fundraiser or selling our can of nothing. And of course the can is, it's bought for $2.99, but then you fill it with your spare change. You fill it with something. You change nothing into something, and then it could be returned to the Episcopal Church of the Epiphany, where the, the proceeds go directly to us at Solomon House. And so how could I forget to say that? The can of nothing <laughs> must become something Yay. in order for it to help us. So that is, that's the catch uh, of this whole fundraiser, is that we're trying to involve as many people as we can, because you know we all have change in our couches, right? Throw it in that can instead. And so again, it's available right now at Sem Seminole South and A&E Gallery, but we welcome any other vendors who would be interested in carrying. And then finally, I thank you again, and I would like to close with a, a quote from Matthew 25, and the king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. And that, see, I got the frisson. <laughs> <laughs> because it's true, you know. So thank you very much, and uh, on behalf of the Solomon House Board, I appreciate you all letting us come and speak to you about this. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. You. Thanks for all y'all did. We really appreciate it. All right, moving on to agenda item four, financial reports. Uh, budget to actual comparisons, May 31st, 2017, uh, Fed at Dupre and Kevin Zarang, City Treasurer's. Okay, so each of y'all received the um, budget comparison. This is for the seven months ended May 31st, which based on that, on being seven months, we should be about 58% of budget. And I'm going to kind of do like last time and just go over the totals. And if y'all have any questions about, you know, any of the any of the totals or any of the detail that was attached to it, feel free to um, stop me or ask me after. Um, general fund, our total revenues, um, we budgeted $15,289,000. We're at $9,111,000, which is right at 59.5%. And our total expenditures budgeted $16,112,000. We're at $8,422,000, which is 52%. So both of those are, are either at, well, revenues a little bit over, which is, is not a problem, and expenses are below the 58%. If you look at parks and recreation, our revenues are at 74.52% and our expenses are at 47%. Um, I think I said this last time, but a big portion of parks and recreation revenue is their ad valorem taxes, which are recognized at the beginning of the year. That's why it's higher. 
Um, public works fund uh, revenues at 48%, expenses at 46.6, .6. sales tax revenues are at 59.8%, expenses at 58.5%, garbage revenues are at 59 almost 59 and a half percent um, expenses at 58 percent section 8 revenues at right at 59 percent expenses at 58 and our wastewater revenues are at 55 percent and expenses at 51 percent so everyone is is pretty much within where you would expect them to be at this point in time does anyone have any questions Dan? No. No, no. no? no questions tonight. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> no questions? Yeah, I need to go somewhere. <laughs> well, wait, I have more. Oh, no, no, I don't. <laughs> That's it? Thank you. That's it? Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, now, we're moving on to item five. Public hearing? Public hearing on ordinance number 2017-12 to enter into a cooperative endeavor agreement and lease with the New Iberian Museum Foundation, Inc., which notice was published on July 31st, 2017, August 3rd, 2017, and August 7th, 2017. Okay, I need a motion to open our public hearing. Motion. So moved by... Second. I have a bunch of them. Oh. Uh, moved by Councilman Lewis and a second by Councilman Broussard. Uh, do we have any public comments on this agenda item? Hearing none, I have a motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Motion by Council, Council Member Lopez. I have a second. Second. Second by Council Member Lewis. Uh, now we move on to the ordinance. An ordinance enter into a cooperative endeavor agreement and lease with the New Iberia Museum Foundation, Inc. for the property being improved and developed with State of Louisiana Capital Outlay Funds and known as the George Wright Reed Park Phase 1. Do I have a motion? Motion. Motion by Council Member I'll Ledbetter, second. I think. And a, Okay, and then a motion by Council Member Guidry and a second by Council Member Ledbetter. Do we have any discussion on this item? I do. Yes, sir. Mayor Fulkemper. I, I see in one of the articles down there about the agreement can be um, uh, there's a default at one time that we can um, get out of the agreement. Do they have the same um, opportunity? As long as it's a, I'll let Jeff clear it up, but as long as it's a park or a parking area, we will own the property. Okay, what, what particular thing? It says about, you know, we have to give a 90 day notice um, I, I just want to make sure this is for a, a long term that we don't have to be concerned about article three. change. Article 3. And, and article um, 19. 19. Article 19. It says it again in 3. Okay. The, re the reason we do that is if, if we're in default under the deal, they don't automatically cancel it. They have to give us 90 days to cure the default. So this is to prevent some breach of the agreement from being used to terminate it immediately. So if we're not doing what we're supposed to do, then, um, or if they're not doing what they're supposed to do, then we have to notify them and give them 90 days to straighten up before we kick them out. But is the, is the museum that we have the agreement with not with the owners of the property since it was donated to them? Right. Right. Right, okay. the two separate things. We have a donation and we have, this is really a lease. So we really have a lease to the museum. And you know, like some leases, it says if the tenant defaults, they have to get a notice and an opportunity to, to cure the default before we evict the tenant. Yeah. So that's what I want to make sure. Yeah, no, this, this does not allow us to cut it short or allow them to cut it short. Okay, thank you. Further questions? Hearing none, please vote your machines. Motion carries. Thank you. Madam Clerk, item number seven, resolutions. Resolution authorizing the City of New Iberia to submit applications to Louisiana Housing Corporation for the 2017 Emergency Solutions Grants Program. Do I have a motion? Motion. Uh, second. Motion by Councilmember Lewis, second by Councilmember Ledbetter. Do we have any discussion? 
hearing none, please vote your machines. Motion carries. Agenda item 7B. Resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a settlement agreement with Orrin Chance Wilder and Jean James Wilder. I'll make a, well, I'd like to make a substitute motion okay. to defer this item to the next council meeting and also add to the agenda to give us opportunity to go into executive session. Um, this actually is in my district, the last house on the border. <laughs> it really is. Um, and uh, I, I understand, you know, what's in our packet is very vague. And I think that by next meeting, um, we'll be at a place where I'll be better informed with the mayor and with Mr. Simon, and we can talk about the situation, educate everyone so that they can feel comfortable with a vote. A second. Okay, that, we have a motion, and I have a second on the floor by Mayor for Tim Dahl. It's really a motion to table, right? I mean, to yeah, to defer table to table. table. Well, I, I thought table makes it go away. I thought defer, defer makes it just puts it to the, I can defer it to the next meeting. Table. Jeff, for a legal opinion, if you table something, it's dead. If you defer it, it comes to the next meeting. You can defer it to another meeting. Is there a difference? I could be wrong, but yeah, I, I was, was taught the other yeah. way. I was taught that tabling killed it. Right. And somebody right. had to put it back on the agenda and make another motion to bring it back Correct. up. Correct. And deferring it. Yeah, yeah somebody right. and opposite it was for a, me. Was a yeah, way. Opposite side. Yes. Yeah, I mean, to, take, yeah, to table it, it's not there until somebody makes a motion to take Correct. it off right. the table. Right. To right. defer I would, it, we can just defer it. I would like to make a motion to defer it um, okay. and also to have an executive session. And like I said, hopefully by okay. then. Uh, yeah. Well, I have a motion and a second. Everybody's clear what we're doing? Yeah. Okay. Then yeah. I'll. Okay. Right now, instead of discussing this tonight, mm -hmm. we would defer to the next meeting. Jeff, uh, Natalie requested to defer it and to also look into that we could go into executive session to talk about it. Right. I uh, got that part. My part was um, how do you go into executive session so we'd have to put it on the agenda to do it or at the next to meeting we put it on the we do a public notice. Well, I'll let Jeff. Okay. Uh, to go into executive session we have to have an agenda item that says we're going into executive session. Right. Uh, that has to be approved at the meeting and it has to be a matter that deals with collective bargaining like a labor contract or with prospective litigation after written demand. So there's some pretty tight restrictions on what you can go into executive session for. We can, by the next meeting, get this thing in a posture where we can have an executive session if that's what y'all want to do. Okay. Uh, yeah. So legally, we can't go into executive session at this no. meeting? No. Until it goes on the agenda. Right, we have to publicize and That's take some I steps. Correct, okay. correct. Uh, further comments? Is everybody clear? Mm -hmm. Okay, then I'll ask you to please vote your machines. Okay. Substitute motion carries, so we'll address this issue at the next meeting. Great, thank y'all. Item number eight, uh, I'll do this one. <laughs> Items for discussion, we have none tonight, okay? <laughs> so. Now we move on to item number nine. Madam Clerk? Council well, remarks. <laughs> Let you. me do that one. Yeah, that's it. Uh, we'll just go around the table, starting with Council Member Lopez. None. None? Great, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I want to thank you, Mayor, uh, Parks and Recreation, and anybody else from the city. Uh, the uh, Sheriff Department, they helped me uh, have a successful event uh, with the uh, 12th annual cuts for kids sponsored by uh, Omega Sci-Fi and local barber shops. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for what you did. Mr. Broussard. I just saw a picture. Fire Chief. Thank you for clearing up a business place. 15 to 20 calls in the last three or four months about a fire hazard in back of a business place. We don't want to name names. Name. It is very nice to see it clean, and I hope it stays clean. And if not, we give tickets to whoever litters their business places. 
keep it clean. Get an extra dumpster. Do something. And keep the yard very beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Sorry. Can I put it on? Um, I just wanted to announce that we have a new little business open on East End by Torita Village, a little bar open. Um, so y'all can go visit that. That's where he's going. Yeah. Huh? You said you had somewhere to go. I'm not going there. <laughs> I'll go bar. But anyway, just support another new business opening up in New Iberia. It's exciting. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council member like that? <laughs> I just want to invite everybody to uh, Neighborhood Watch for District 4 and District 5 on uh, Thursday. Uh, we will have somebody, like I said, at our previous meeting from Restore Louisiana. So uh, inviting the whole community to come on out and get the information. And if you were affected by the flood and uh, you didn't qualify, come and they've given you a second chance. So come and join us Thursday night at 6 o'clock at the Slime. Thank you. Council Member Gitt? Um, I just want to add to uh, what Councilwoman Deidre said, um, just to add that they will have counselors on hand and you can come and fill out a survey um, and from there um, you will get um, assistance, further assistance. If you've been affected by the flood, they can determine that from the survey. Um, also too, I want to thank the mayor and the sponsors, all the sponsors. Um, for the uh, and the partnership that I did with PCA, um, over 200 uh, kids we fed um, on the spot. Some of them came back three times to eat, um, but the main goal was to bring them to Christ. And there were several several uh, children and adults that came to Christ at the end of the program. It was wall to wall, and I want to thank Park and Recreations um, for helping us out with that. And um, I'm just excited about it, and I just want to thank our mayor for allowing us to do our thing. Thank you. Thank you. It was a good event. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dustin, yeah. my, 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 my comment might be a little negative compared to everybody's positive. I've been getting a lot of complaints uh, lately. With all the rain we've been having, people not just uh, the citizens that live, but also the, the guys, the people that cut the grass, are blowing a lot of grass in the streets. And we go out there and try our best to get these drains clean, and it's just getting worse and worse. I've had pictures all week long sent to me, I'm going to check it out, and I'm talking one to two inches of grass just piled up in the street and they're leaving it the drive off. So I know we talked about it over and over, you know, just just please, just if y'all can, put it back in the yards, because. A lot of the times the public works are us out there cleaning those drains to get them back flowing again. So just I'm urging for the residents to really think about it before they do it. Thank you. Thank you. Our next council meeting September the 5th and we still got some adjudicated property. The next auction is September the 6th and I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. Second. Bye. I love Council that. Council Lopez. Thank you all very much. <laughs>